Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Some new line. Mount. A beautiful, sweet, succulent graph that we're going to be installing today. Oh. So, guys, if you've, uh, if you've read the title, I'm sure you've got a good idea of what's going on here. We have got the Garmin Echomat Chirp 73CV. Uh, picked it up at Cabela's. Uh, it says $600. They had it on sale, like way on sale. So I ended up grabbing one uh, because I'm cheap. I would never pay $600. But I still paid a pretty penny for it. Anyway, so, anyway, so today what we're going to be doing is uninstalling that one, which I'm sure you guys probably aren't too interested in. I'm probably just going to zip through that really fast and uh, not go into too much detail. And what we're going to be doing is installing this bad boy onto the boat and uh, we're gonna fire it up and test it so we'll go ahead and do the unboxing just because I really want to do that and then we'll get to uh, uninstalling this Lawrence here so again Garmin Echo Map Chirp 73 CV comes with extra stuff that you can buy you know this nice thing here this uh, Panoptics all seeing sonar um, guys get on you know Whenever you're done watching this video, search uh, for the Panoptics on YouTube here, and uh, and check this thing out. This uh, this Panoptics stuff is is pretty cool. And uh, for any of you guys who are looking into the uh, Garmin or looking into getting a new graph, uh, especially if you you know, especially if you're looking to get something really nice um, and in high end, this Panoptics thing right here, uh, it's it's almost makes it too easy for people to catch fish. It's it's just check it out. So we've got the Garmin here, boys. We've got the Garmin here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man. Sorry, I got dog hair on it. Comes with a nice cover. I like it. Pop that cover off. Ooh. It's really hard to do with one hand. Maybe I should have left that on there while we were installing. Whatever. So there she is in all of her glory. I'm excited. Flush mount template. Don't care about that because we're not going to be flush mounting it. I'll go over that here in a second. Cardboard. So we've got cables. Screws. That's the mount. My receipt. All right, and the transducer and everything is in there. Instructions, wire stuff, books. All right, guys, so that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and put that to the side. Oh, and we also got this uh, RAM mount to mount the graph too. Hopefully it's not too small, but since the graph is just let's, let's see here since the graph comes with a, a base mount it's way too big so I'm gonna I gotta put a ram out here to kinda have it stick out and it's gonna sit uh, kinda like this right here looking pretty pretty sexy I think so we're gonna go with that so I'm gonna go ahead and, and uninstall this Lawrence we're just gonna go fast forward because I'm sure you guys don't want to see this and uh, we're gonna get it uh, get started on the Grant Garmin <sighs> okay, so uh, a little update here. Uh, I've been working for a little while and um, having a, a lot of trouble here trying to get the old wiring out for the uh, the old transducer. And uh, I've come to realize that from the factory, Tracker has ran the wiring like underneath everything. I'll have to literally take this boat apart to get all the wiring out and not only did they run it under everything but it's tied into everything they've, they've, they've zip tied it up to everything so I can't just you know pull it through which sucks because now I've got this transducer which comes through these wirings here it goes under here and back up inside here and then straight down under like all the seat and behind all this dashboard stuff which I'd have to, I'd have to take like okay I'd have to take all this dashboard out everything it's way down in there it's just it's a nightmare so 
it comes through here, the wire does for the transducer, straight across, a couple clamps, straight down to there. I've got this transducer hanging. So here's the problem. This transducer, I can't, I can't remove it right now. I can't take it out. I'll have to take the bolt completely apart. And I just don't have time for that. I don't have the time to take this bolt apart and put it back together. And then install this Garmin. So, I think what I'm going to do is take these wires. I got my power wires unhooked. I'm going to take these wires and everything. Just kind of tape it up nice. Tie it up nice, something like that. And then just put it back in here in the back of this uh, dashboard on this end. And down here, I'm going to take the transducer... I'm going to take the transducer off, take all these clamps and undo all of those. I'm going to take the transducer, tie the, take all the line through here, take the transducer, tie a line to it, and then tie it up and underneath this, this little uh, piece of aluminum here, up and out of the way, hidden, so you'll never see it. What that does is it keeps the uh, option for me to reinstall the Lawrence Fish Finder if I choose to ever sell the boat and just keep that fish finder with it and take my Garmin with me which is probably something I would definitely do and uh, it saves me like I mean hours and hours and hours of work so what we're gonna do is go ahead and get started with the Garmin and the first thing that we're gonna have to do is run the transducer line and, uh, and yeah all the power lines and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and button this up, which you guys aren't gonna have to watch, and uh, I'll get started installing the new wiring right now. Okay, so we're gonna start with the uh, transducer here. What we're gonna do is go ahead and get the mounts and stuff on it, and then we're gonna run our wires. So first thing we're gonna do is put our trans mount, well, put our transducer mount on here, which is this bracket right here. And it goes on, it has these little dowels on the transducer where you just smack it on there, it goes right where it needs to be. There's no trying to line it up. And it already comes with your hardware as well. Okay, so once you got these screws in, just make sure these are pretty tight, guys, because this is what's holding on the money right here. Uh, this is probably the most expensive thing about this unit and uh, you don't want this to come off so make sure you just get these really good and tight and don't forget your little your lock washers underneath that look like little stars now if you're mounting the transom there's a the instruction booklet here will tell you straight up how to mount it so what we've done first is mount our uh, transom mount bracket on there so now we're going to install the transom mount hardware so it'll tell you about how to line it up and how to how to do you know all that stuff now guys, it's telling you to drill holes in the uh, in the transom here. Just be careful doing this, guys. You don't want to. You really don't want to screw this up because that could, uh, you know, you're you're putting holes in the boat. So what I'm going to be trying to do is take this bracket and use the already existing holes that I've got from the old transducer. And as a side note, make sure you guys have some silicone. Uh, I'll show you. I'm using this stuff. It's a uh, 100% silicone water you know water ready whatever in 30 minutes uh, just make sure you guys use some silicone on everything that's on the outside uh, of the boat being drilled into it because you don't want your boat to leak um, it's it's fairly inexpensive you can get any of the hardware stores uh, local to your area just get yourself some silicone and rub it on the bolts or whatever as you are installing them you don't want this stuff to leak guys I'm telling you so here is our transom bracket and what I'm going to try to do is see if I can get these holes to line up with the old holes on the back of the boat here. So we're going to go back and see if I can make these work. Alright guys, so as you can see I've got two holes here for my old mount bracket. And this was a, a hole they put in there for a, a clamp to hold the, the wire on itself. So with this hole, if I'm not going to use it, which I probably won't, I'm going to take some silicone and run that bolt right back in tight. And hopefully it should stay like that and not leak. I'm going to try and see if this bracket here will work with those holes. Alright, so it looks like the uh, the bracket from the Garmin is going to work 
with the uh, the same the same holes that the bracket from the Lawrence used. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this bracket mounted on there, and then we're gonna run our transducer and tie it up and run it all the way up to the dash. Uh, shouldn't take but just a couple minutes to do this. So let's hang on here. All right, guys. So on my Lawrence, it actually came with these washers that have rubber on them. So what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna try to go ahead and use those as well on the back of this bracket. Uh, these did not come with this these did not come with the Garmin bracketry, but it's just an extra little form of protection to keep this boat from leaking, which is a 100% what I do not want. Uh, I'm going to use go ahead and use the Garmin bolts since they're a little longer than the Lawrence one was, and the reason I'm doing that is because this transducer is so much bigger and heavier than the Lawrence transducer was. So, Again, I'm going to go ahead and put some silicone on the end of this nut, uh, on this bolt here and screw it into the transom. Make sure you use the silicone, guys. Always make sure you use the silicone. Can't stress it enough. You don't want this bad boy to leak. Now, the good thing about these holes is they're already level from the factory. I didn't have to worry about getting this thing level. You really guys, you really want to focus on getting your transducer perfectly level front to back and side to side. That way you get a perfect down scan uh, from what's underneath the boat. It's not going to be tilted one way and scanning that way or tilted that way and scanning that way or backwards, forwards, vice versa, whatever. So you really want to make sure you get this thing perfectly level side to side here. And then when you put your transmit transducer on like this, you really want to make sure that the front to back is also uh, level as well. Okay guys, so what I'm, going to do, what I'm going to be doing now is going ahead and installing the transducer itself. And we're going to try and adjust the height here uh, of the transducer to, to kind of get it where we want it. Now you can do this before or after you mount this. Uh, I chose to do it after just because that's how I did it. Now as far as depth goes guys, you're going to want to keep in mind that the lower you go, the more it will actually affect the boat itself. If you take this really low and you're trying to get on plane, it, it's causing a, a drag uh, as it's going through the water here. So for my boat, I'm thinking that all the way up is going to be best for me. If you go too high though, guys, keep in mind, it can see this boat and actually mess with the transducer itself and not read correctly. What you're going to do is go ahead and set it to where you think you'll need it and lock it in place. Make sure this is level side to side on front to back and lock it in place. Once everything's good and tight, give it a smack check just to make sure that it's not going to move around. Don't hit it too hard, otherwise it won't break it. Now I'm going to give you guys a little closer look here. As you can see, it's pretty level with the boat. My boat's sitting pretty level in the garage right now. So that's pretty level this way. And this way, it's pretty level as well. You don't want it to be even with the bottom of your boat, especially on these V-bottoms, guys, because that is obviously not level. Get this right here as level as you can. If you need to, you can get a carpenter's level or something like that and make it perfectly level. Make sure it's good and tight, back and forth, wiggle it around, make sure it doesn't wiggle, and you should be good to start running the lines. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this hole right here so we don't get any leaks, and uh, we'll get started on running this cable. Oh, and before I forget, Remember, always wipe off the access or on the bottoms. You know, anywhere you touch that silicone, you don't want it because it ended up looking like that, like they did from factory. But, always leave that around the screw head. That's going to dry like that and make a perfect gasket. As you can see, way up in there, it's perfect. Everything's perfect. We want to keep it just like that to make an extra seal around that bolt head so it doesn't leak. So as far as mounting this cable, guys, I'm going to go ahead and do it the same way that they did it from factory. I'm going to use the same holes they drilled. That way, I'm going to use the same holes they drilled. That way, there's no extra drilling, no extra holes in the outside of the boat. I don't want to make anything. Uh, I, want to, I don't want to add any holes because, remember, guys, the more holes you add, the more likely your boat is to leak. We don't want any leaks. We want this thing to be perfect and bone dry while we're operating. So I'm going to go ahead and use this hole here, and there's some holes inside. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use silicone on every hole that's been drilled uh, because my boat is aluminum and I don't want water getting in there and causing any kind of corrosion uh, to start. So we're going to go ahead and use silicone on every hole that they've already drilled for us. 
remember guys, if you're drilling your own holes in like a fiberglass boat, just be very careful, take your time. The instructions have the drill bit sizes you guys need to use. I know I'm not showing you guys that because obviously I've already got already, I've already got my holes pre-drilled from the factory, but just pay attention, take your time, and just go slow, guys. Now I've already got some of these clamps that come with the uh, Lawrence unit right here. What these do is they wrap around the wire. You just take one of these screws that's included and screw it into the boat. Already pre-drilled hole I have, so that's what we're using. I'm gonna go ahead and use these clamps uh, because they're bigger, and I think this this wire is a little bigger in diameter than the Lawrence unit was. So I'm gonna use these clamps as much as I can, but I still got those other clamps that I think I can make work. But we're gonna try and use these first. So it turns out the screws that got sent with the Garmin are smaller in diameter than the Lawrence screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and back this out. And I'm gonna use one of the Lawrence screws instead. Okay, so we went ahead and got our little uh, clamp mounted here. As far as how tight you want this pulled, guys, you're gonna to wanna to keep it kinda of tight. You don't want too much slack because the water can grab it and pull it. But aside from that, you also have to keep in mind, if something does hit this, you wanna make sure you've got plenty enough slack to where this thing can, can move in case a log hits it because you don't wanna rip the wire out of there and damage the transducer any further than it already may be by taking that impact. So what I'm gonna do, guys, is just kinda, of, just kinda of take the slack out of it. I'm not gonna pull it tight, just kinda of take the slack out of it a little bit uh, you, you can see it still got, he still has a little curve to it, that's fine. And I'm going to go ahead and tie it up up top and start clamping it up up there as well. Okay guys, so, so now that I've got it, now that I've got it clamped up in uh, most of the spots here, I'm going to go ahead and pull the slack up like I was telling you. And uh, we're going to kind of take some zip ties here and tie it around the existing harness to kind of keep it tied in and uh, neat and tidy. So a little tip for you guys, uh, when it comes to zip ties, you see how these guys pointed up? When I cut these just like this, it's gonna leave a sharp point right on the top of there. And that's sticking straight up. So if I stick my foot here, or if I'm swimming off the back of the boat and I'm trying to climb up right here, I can cut myself on that really easily, guys. So what I wanna do is take that and just bend it down just like that. Take it, bend it down just like that. I'm gonna get my wire just the way I want it and then pull it tight. Then, when I cut it, there's nothing for me to get cut on. I can step anywhere. If I really wanna go the extra step, you can take your side cutters, see how they got that flat bottom, and you can just kinda of tap the bottom. You can tap the cut on that zip tie, and it'll actually flatten it out and keep you from getting cut as easily, but you can still get cut, so always turn them down. Okay, so here's what we've got so far. We've got our transducer mounts on and tightened down with our silicone on every, every single hole. Our transducer actually mounted and leveled. We've got our harness coming up with a little bit of slack to it. Throw our mount silicone over the back of the transom here. Throw another mount with silicone, and I just touched it. Going around the back here, tying into our harness. And we're going under the back. Now what we got to do is go under the back and we got to run this cable all the way through here underneath all this crap and come out right in here or I'm thinking maybe up in the front here. We'll see how it, uh, how it pans out. So right now I'm going to stop on the transducer line and I'm going to come up here and work on my mount. Uh, the reason I'm stopping and working on the mount first is the original lines came through this hole here and they came up and through the original mount as you can see. The new mount the new mount is much smaller and doesn't come with that option. So what we're going to have is something like this. So what I can do is just unscrew this right here and this ball will pop right out. I'm going to go ahead and mount this in some form or fashion like that and we're going to try and take something and sand down these holes and maybe fill them to make it look a little better since they kind of look like poopy right now. We're going to get this mounted right in the center and I'm thinking my wiring is going to come from actually through here and just kind of come up. That way I've got plenty of room to wiggle back and forth 
everything and then twist my mount my unit around as well okay so, so what i'm doing now guys is i'm getting the mount centered right where i want it i'm gonna take my pin here and mark where these holes are going to be okay guys so what i'm going to do is go ahead and get my mount kind of where i want it try and get it as perfect as i can i'm going to take these screws and go ahead and drill them in I'm not going to tighten them down all the way first. I'm just going to go ahead and get them kind of snug. That way I can still move it around and get the mount where I want it exactly. Now if you're drilling into plastic like I'm doing right here, you got to make sure that you're not overdoing the tightness on this stuff. You can really just pull the threads right out, guys, and it'll be a hole in your, in your boat now that you can't use. Uh, the only way to go around that would be to get a bigger screw or change locations of the mount itself. So just make sure when you're tightening these down, don't over tighten them. Uh, once it's snug, it's pretty well good enough. Go ahead and give it a good shake or smack and make sure this thing ain't going to move, but don't over tighten. Alright, so like I said earlier, I'm going to take these holes and try and get them as flush as I can, make them look a good, as good as possible, just because they're kind of ugly having holes in your boat. And unfortunately, the new mount is not the same size uh, as these original mounts so the holes are going to be exposed so what i'm going to do is take this razor blade right here and just really gently cut off this little uh, access stuff we get going on and try to make it look as nice as possible so now i'm going to go ahead and try and test out the mount here we can go from there All right, guys, so the new mount's in place. As you can see, it's looking pretty good. All I've got to do to adjust is just loosen this guy up right here. I can spin it all the way around, back and forth, twist it around, whatever I want to do. My wire's going to be coming right here out of this hole. So I'll have them right coming up like that. Nice and tidy, looking good. I don't want them too crazy looking. And I'll still be able to turn this unit all the way around and use it at the front of the boat or the console. Uh, since I've only got one unit going on this boat. So the next problem I've run into here is the mount here does not come with bolts to mount it to the actual uh, plate from the Garmin from the Garmin thing. So Garmin sent you they'll send you these screws here to mount the uh, the plate here itself to the actual wood of the boat. Uh, this mount is designed to, to bolt in right here just to screw right into the, the floor and we're not going to do that. So what I'm going to have to do is take this mount off, run down to the hardware store and get some bolts that are long enough to come all the way through and small enough to where they can fit through these holes easily. So what I'm, what I'm going to get total is four bolts, four uh, washers for the top, four washers for the bottom. I want to get, I wanna get lock washers, guys. Make sure you get lock washers. Uh, that way these bolts don't come loose while you're riding, running down the road or uh, on the lake and your unit doesn't fly off. So make sure you get lock washers and lock nuts. Uh, the nuts themselves are going to have like a, a nylon inside the end of them, and uh, it really it'll really keep that uh, that unit solid for you. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off and run down to the hardware store, and uh, I'll be right back. All right, so I've got the bolts. I end up getting a 10-24 uh, by inch and a half, by inch and a quarter. And uh, what these are going to do is go right through this base here. If they just barely fit in this. I also got some uh, little kind of lock wa damn it's hot. I also got some uh, lock washers. What I'm gonna do is take my, my little lock washers. They're like an inside tooth lock washer. I'm just gonna run them over these bolts here, just like that. And then we're gonna put this bad boy like that on the floor. Now, as you'll notice. The head just fits inside there perfectly. We're going to take that and just kind of mount it on just like this. Now what we're going to have to do is kind of adjust this. Unfortunately these holes inside here, they're just not very big. So I'm going to have to probably take this bolt out and kind of wallow these holes out a little bit. That way I can get this mount mounted on there exactly where I need it to mount.
Now I've also got some nuts that's got these star things built into the bottom of them. Uh, you can use a nylon uh, lock nut like I was talking about earlier, or you can grab these as well. I just grabbed these because they're the first thing I came across. I'm going to put those on, and what we're going to do is get a socket and tighten these bad boys down, and our mount should be ready to put on the boat. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and mount the garment itself. All right, and there's the final look, guys. I think the mount looks great. It's pretty sturdy. These are actually kind of rubberized, so it does have a little give to it, but that's fine. It's not going anywhere. I think we'll be just fine. What I think I might do in the future actually is take one of these back loose and get a steel wire and run it to the mount itself or something like that. That way if this ever was to come off, uh, I could just, it wouldn't go nowhere. It, it would just be safe. It wouldn't fall off. Um, just maybe something to here or even to the, the mount, the unit itself, just because uh, you don't want to lose this, guys. All right, so next what we're going to do is try and get this transducer cable through here all the way out of here and up to the back of the Garmin unit itself. So, this is going to take a minute. Also, keep in mind, this will be different for every single boat. You know, some some people are going to have, you know, no trouble at all getting this ran. Uh, unfortunately for myself, this is going to be a, uh, a feat. It's going to it's gonna take some, some engineering here to try and get this through. So I'm going to sit here and work on it for a few minutes and, uh, so hopefully, hopefully, I just I get it real easy. So I was trying to just shove the wire straight in there and it just wasn't happening. So what I've done, so I've gone inside here and I've got me some mechanics wire. It's a pretty stiff wire, but it's also really moldable. So I'm going to make me a straight line, just like this. I'm going to tape the end of my wire to it, like that, and then run the wire straight up in there, pushing it with this stiff wire instead of trying to push it with this. So. So now I've got to run it from the front of the dash out this hole here. Uh, should be able to get to it pretty easy. I might have to use the wire again. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Perfect. Now we'll just do this. like that. Now we just got to run our power cable in the opposite way we came with this one. All right, and I got it. Now we can also put this on our transducer line. I'm not sure why it doesn't come with it already, uh, but you know, whatever. Now with these wires right here, guys, I know I'm gonna go ahead and tie them up, real, you know, nice light, make them look good. I'm not gonna put any stress on the ends here coming off the back of the unit because that can actually damage it. So just be very careful doing that. I'll use these little tiny zip ties and get it just the way I want it. All right, so we've got that looking nice, good harness. I'm going to give myself plenty of slack because I'm going to want to take this and twist it around to use it on the front. So let's go ahead and try that. Uh, 
Now that's how it's going to look using it on the front of the boat. I'll just turn around. I can just turn around and see and work everything I need to work just like that. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be great. So now we're going to talk about uh, about wiring the sub. You'll notice you've got four wires coming off of your harness here. We're going to be only going to be using two of them. The blue and the brown wire are for the data sharing thing. Uh, I don't have the data sharing option right now, so what we're going to do is just kind of take those, probably put some tape around the ends of them just to keep them from getting corroded at all, and then tape them back on the harness just like so, so they don't get damaged. And uh, we can come back at a later time, hook those up if I decide to get the data sharing option. On this part, you've got a red and a black wire, black wire ground, red wire power. All you do is just pull it apart. You've got your fuse right there just like that. Push it back together. Run your wire through till it clicks and you're back in business. Now on these ends here, you'll see it's just a bare wire. Uh, what they've done here is you can, well I don't have the other wire, what you can do is just put a little uh, terminal end on these to hook them to your uh, your fuse box or your fuse panel, however you may uh, want to do it. Uh, I don't have any terminal ends right now, so I'm not, I'm going to actually be able to just use just the bare wires and screw them onto the uh, to the factory box. And uh, so I'm going to do that for now, and probably come back at a later date and actually do terminal ends so they uh, don't ever come loose. But I'm going to go ahead and hook these up, and uh, we'll go underneath and do it. Now what you're going to see here is this is actually a, a ground block system. This is where the factory ground was. And they're just held in with these little screws. So I'm just going to take my black wire here and lay it underneath this screw and then screw it down. Uh, later on I'll come back and put one of these terminals on both of these wires so that they're a little more uh, secure. Okay, so now I've got my wires hooked up. Uh, I should be able to actually test and see if the uh, unit comes on now. All right, guys, the moment of truth here. Hopefully it comes on with the power button. And she's on. Okay, so we've got a little warning message here. I assume total responsibility. Okay, we're going to set it up as English. Store demonstration. Off. Choose okay to quickly set up the basic functions of your chart plotter. All right. Time format 12 hour, blah, 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 blah. System units. I'm sure you could go back and change these. Metric, touch, yeah, we're going to do that. Position format. I don't know what any of that means. So we're just going to select however the basic stuff is. Alright, vessel type, we're going to be in a power boat. Minimum safe depth for boat is going to be 3 feet. We're going to turn on a shallow water alarm if we do get into some... Minimum overhead clearance, say 10. Collision alarm range, uh, we'll say 500 feet. Explosion alarm time two. Say a minute or three minutes, I guess. One minute. Okay, and we're on the home screen here. Whew. It's taken me, I'd say, it's been 90 degrees, so I'm pretty sweaty and, and hot. There's mosquitoes all over me. But uh, it's taken me, it's definitely taken me a couple hours, guys. Uh, difficulty scale, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd say this is about, if you have to drill holes, I'd say it's about a 6 or a 7, uh, just because you want to make sure those holes are precise, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to screw that up. Uh, if you don't have to drill holes, I'd say this is about a 4 or a 5 in, uh, difficulty, especially if you, if you don't even have to mount it like I did, if you can just mount it to the, you know, directly to the, uh, to the front of the boat there, and just run your cables, it's pretty, pretty simple, it's just a plug and play deal and it pops right on as you can see and you can get started immediately uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and button all this up and get it uh, get it all prettied up again and I'll show you guys the 100% finished product uh, look around just you, you can see how I tucked it all in how neat it looks front to back 
and I'll just do I'll just do a, a quick 30 second uh, rundown on what we did, and then uh, oh, this is gonna be a long video. I'll tell you what, guys. I want to do that. I want to do like a. I think I'm gonna do a two part, two part video series to this, because I think I think this video is gonna end up being really long. I, I haven't edited it yet, obviously. So I'm gonna do a. This is gonna be the install video, and then I'm gonna go ahead and film the first time usage and kind of a a uh, first time review video as well, and uh, that'll be up right after this video comes up. So. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and, and button all this stuff up, guys. And we're gonna do a little 30-second rundown of everything we did, just to kind of go back over it, and uh, we'll be done. So hang tight. All right, guys. So we're all buttoned up here. Obviously, I still got a huge mess. I just need to clean up. Pretty bad mess. But we're gonna do a quick little rundown of what we've uh, what we just did to get this uh, Garmin Echo Map chart plotter installed and up and running. So we started off by taking off the old, the old Lawrence uh, Hook 3X piece of crap, and what we did, and what we did was we hooked up our transducer here. We got our mount, ugh, we got our brackets mounted. We made sure we use silicone in all the holes. We got our, uh, we got our transducer level, front to back and side to side. We've got our wires ran up to clamps going over the back of the transom here, and uh, we've got silicone in the holes as well on there. We've got our harness ran back along with this harness here as you can see it goes up underneath in here and in this little wire hide area through the dash all the way out to here coming up to the back of our Garmin. Make sure we got plenty of extra slack because we want to be able to take this unit and twist it around so we can use it from the forward deck here and uh, not just from the console. We've got our power, a uh, power and ground wire ran down through the dash and into our factory fuse box below, uh, with fuses and all that, and uh, that's pretty much it. We've got this uh, cover that comes with it. It all works great. We've got our uh, oh, we've got our ram mount here that we've uh, installed as well with just four screws, and then we had to go to the hardware store and get some some more screws for that. But uh, as you can see, it's got a little wobble to it, but that's fine. We're okay with that, and. Uh, yeah, we're good to go. It comes right on. So again, I'm not sure how how long this video is going to be. It's probably going to be pretty long for just the install video. So I think I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and split the install and first review video up into two separate videos here, uh, just because of I don't want to have to upload a two-hour video or how long this thing's going to be. So, uh, anyways, uh, for all you guys who uh, want to see the install and want to see the review. Uh, I'll be uploading these probably about the same time. Uh, I'll try to get them up both. Uh, if not, they'll be just a day or two apart. Uh, so anyways, thank you guys for watching this as always. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please let me know in the comment section below if you uh, if you like this and if you'd like me to go over anything else with this uh, whole system here. Uh, I will be covering usage and uh, functionality in the next video, which is going to be the uh, first use slash review uh, video. Well, I got a huge mess to clean up, guys, so I'll see you guys on the next video. We'll be on the water, on the boat, going over this uh, this graph here. Thanks again, as always, guys, for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys on the next video.